and they're off for the JCB Triumph Hurdle, the first race on Boodle's Cheltenham Gold Cup Day, and Blood Destiny is going to take the first with Jupiter Dujit, who predictably is flying off in the early stages. And it's Jupiter Dujit from Blood Destiny in second, Hypotenuse in third. They are followed by Gypco on the near side, and then uh, Lossy Mouth is back in fifth place. Behind those is Gala Masto and Gust of Wind on the outside as Jupiter Jujit establishes a six or seven length lead. In the midfield, Al Muhit on the extreme far side, Green Jacket is active. Juti, Jigar behind those with Zenta, Sinsa, then right so Tom and Ascending, and Jakovec Cavan is the bat marker in an orange jacket, nearing the second flight. And Jupiter Jujit is the leader by about four lengths here to Hypotenuse on the far side of Blood Destiny, who jumped rather better. Uh, back in the uh, field, a mistake there from Jagard. Lossy Mouth at the moment in fourth place in the pink jacket, just pulling off the heels of Jipco, fifth place, as they run towards the back straight. Jupiter Jujit from Blood Destiny. Then Jipco on the inside. Hypotenuse is taken out wide, followed by Lossy Mouth and Active Duty. Then Gala Marso and Gust of Wind and Al Muhit. And then in the midfield, Sinsa on the inside of Zensa. And then after Zenta is uh, Jagard, followed by Right So Tom. And then Ascending and Jakovet Cavan as the leader. Jupiter Jajit now arrives at flight number three and jumps it well. They're all safely over there, quite well strung out. Blood Destiny is in second place in the red jacket. Jibco on the near side in the pink colors. Hypotenuse is not far away. And uh, then Lossy Mouth is now towards the outside. They're followed by Gala Marso and Gust of Wind. Hypotenuse is pulling quite hard. It almost looks as though the rider's almost on one rein as they go towards the next. And Hypotenuse with Jupiter Dujit on the inside. Jipco between the pair. They're tracked by Blood Destiny, Gala Marceau. And then just behind those is Gust of Wind and Lossy Mouth just ahead of Gust of Wind, the grey filly with the uh, pink jacket as they race on towards the third last flight going up the top of the hill in the JCB Triumph Hurdle and Jipco has now taken it up under Luca Morgan. Jupiter Jujit is now on the retreat. In second is Hypotenuse. In third is Blood Destiny. Then Lossy Mouth. Oh, Hypotenuse has jumped right out to the right there. I just don't think the rider can steer Hypotenuse here, Sean Bowen, as they now reach the top of the hill. In behind them then is Zenta, not far away, active duty on the inside, gust of wind, as they now begin the turn left-handed, and it's Jipco that leads, Lossy Mouth, out wide, full of running at the moment, almost too much. Blood Destiny is right there as well, then gust of wind and Gala Marceau, active beauty. Uh, duty on the inside then from Zenta, Al Muhit and Jagard and then right so Tom uh, further back to ascending since as well out of touch now together with Jakovet Cavan and the fading Jupiter Dujit heading down towards the second last and Lossy Mouth is coming there strongly on the outside of Jipco, Blood Destiny gust of wind in contention on the outside right so Tom is running around Jipco and Lossy Mouth were first and second and now they race on towards the final turn and the very long run to the final flight. Gust of wind chasing. So too Zenta coming through with Blood Destiny and Gala Marso. Now Lossy Mouth goes on into the lead and Lossy Mouth is sent right, right across to the stands rail by Paul Townend, often the best place to be. Challenged by stable companion Zenta and another stable companion Gala Marso. And then Gust of wind in fourth place and behind those then is ascending. Lossy Mouth from Zenta as they near the final flight. Lossy Mouth picks up a bit more over the last. Good job. Lossy Mouth from Zenta in second place. Gala Marceau is back in third and racing up the hill. She's really opening up. It's Lossy Mouth by three lengths going up towards the line. Paul Townend pushes her out and it's another win for Willie Mullins in the triumph. Gala Marceau in second place. Third was Zenta. One, two, three for the Mullins team. Back in fourth was a gust of wind. A one, two, three, four. Rich Ritchie is the proud owner, along with his wife Susanna, of Lossy Mouth of the JCB Triumph Hurdle. Many congratulations. So you were so disheartened and upset by what happened at the Dublin Racing Festival. You knew you still had a filly of great ability. Yes, I remember seeing it afterwards, and we, I, I just felt unlucky in the day. I mean, I, I'm delighted that the uh, the one that beat us that day was second, mm. so it sort mm. of franks the form. Um, just unlucky that day. Um, but uh, no, she's a lovely, lovely filly, and um, she's, uh, she's got a lot of, of scope. She's um, 
National Hunt bred. She's a very nice mare. She did really well to cope with all of those circumstances with a full start, a few of the horses really running off too fast. She was unflappable. I mean, she did get a tank on a little bit too out, but she did really well, very yeah. professional. Yeah, Paul said coming down the hill, he said, wow, she wants to crack on, but he just, he, he held on to her just enough and he, he kind of filled her up and she responded to that sort of pulling back, which is great, which shows some maturity, as you say, and professionalism. And then, yeah, he said, when he let her go, it was just brilliant up the hill and that's great. Yeah, it was a ride of, I think, showed that all of Paul's experience, didn't it? And uh, Yes, I think that's very fair. And um, it, I'm glad for him because Willie could sort of, Hammered in the last day, didn't he? After that ride, which what wasn't for the record. I didn't think that was Paul's fault. I thought the tactics were wrong, so it's Woody's fault actually. <laughs> but in his best Jose Mourinho moment, he was looking for somebody else to blame. <laughs> but, but, but I think I think on the day, Paul was gutted, and it's great to get you know sports about redemption. I've said it before, and it's just mm. wonderful. It is. It's vindication. This could be a big day for you. You've got Royal Pagal. You've got Allegory de Vassi, who is a brilliant mare. Let's start with Royal Pagal. He has a nasty habit of cutting into himself, doesn't he? He does. He's a bit clumsy, isn't he? <laughs> uh, like his owner. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, is the ground soft? What's the riding like? Is it sticky? Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering whether it's, it's, it's I, not yeah, quite what, what you want. No, I no, I don't think, let, yesterday I was quite hopeful and thought with that, uh, with that rain last night, he's not a 50 to one chance, but I'm not quite sure. I didn't ask Paul about the ground actually, but look, he ran brilliantly here last year. I mean, if you remember coming down the hill, I was getting jiggy. He was, you know, he was in for, and they just got pipped for third by the fourth and fifth. I think there was a length or length and a half between them. And so, look, he likes the course. Um, he'll be fresh and well, and hopefully he's got a chance. And the mayor in the in the mayor's chase is, is a good is a good horse. Yes. Not a lot of experience. The others have more experience, but she's a good mare. Yes, and Paul's going to have to be masterful again, I think, with keeping her going out to the right. Well, I think I think she I think he fell asleep the last time. That's the first time he rode her down. It was at Thurless, and um, when she caught him by surprise at the first, she jumps a bit to her right. She didn't at Limerick, um, but uh, she hasn't in her schooling. So we'll see. Maybe it's just something. You know, Paul likes to give them their heads, so we'll see what happens today. Well, he'll be ready for her now. Many yeah. congratulations. Well done. Lovely. Thanks very Thank much, Lydia. There's now five winners on the week for Willie Mullins. He ran four in the Triumph Hurdle, and he got the first four home, headed, of course, by the main hope, Lossy Mouth. Yes. I, didn't, I bet you didn't know where to look, because there were so many things happening in that race, wasn't there? Yes, especially at the top of the hill. When Paul, when, you know, the mayor just pulled Paul into the race and I could see Paul thinking, you know, I, I better not go on, but he didn't want to stop her and disappoint her either. So he, he just played a fine line uh, with her, letting her gallop, but not going on. And, um, you know, all the other ones coming up around her, um, our own ones and the opposition. And uh, it, it was hard. It was hard to watch until she asserted herself turning for home. And then... You could see that she was on a great stride going to the last, so that was good. Jumped the last, got on the rail, and I was just hoping that she wouldn't capsize because uh, Zenta, JP, my manager's horse, was coming with a, a real good run. Uh, that just fizzled out, and Gala Marceau got second, so uh, we're very pleased. And Gust of Wind, I think, finished fourth, yeah. So we have a nice team going forward for next season. You, you really have, and I thought it was a masterful ride from Paul, showing all of his experience about this course, what the filly's like, and how the race had panned out. It was, you know, considering what happened earlier in the week, and uh, it, it, was a, it was a very tough on him at the top of the hill because they, they just slowed it down in front a little bit, and next thing she just jumped onto the bridle, and, you know, you can't do much about it. You, you've got to, you can't close them down. You've got to keep them running, but you, you don't want to play all your cards at that time, you know, so it was very difficult. He did it very well. You were a little critical of Paul at the Dublin Racing Festival, where you felt that you, you ended up giving him, uh, lost him out too hard a race in, in obvious defeat, you, you felt. You were worried that that, that that race might leave a mark on the yeah, filly, yeah. and it, had, it clearly hasn't. Yes, I mean, you know, she's, she's a real good mare. She's got a great temperament. That, that's the one thing about her. She's um, a lot of other horses that would be, like if you did that to Gala Marceau or maybe Blood Destiny, they wouldn't recover. But she just goes home. It's just what happened on the day, and she's, she eats up. She's got a great temperament, and that's really going to stand to her in the future. What do you see her as? Well, people are starting to talk of her as a champion hurdler, so, you know. You like champion hurdlers? Well, they're, they're always nice to have around the place. <laughs> uh, you know, we're looking at Constitution Hill. He's going to be hard to beat, but she'll be only five next year. So if she comes back here as an older mayor for the champion hurdle, maybe we'll go to the mayor's hurdle next year. Mm. We'll see, mm. see how she progresses. It's always very hard for five-year-olds, but I'm not sure too many five-year-old mayors maybe have run in the champion hurdle. 
I can't think of one. You know, maybe that seven pounds weight concession mm. might be enough. Mm. Yeah. And have you had a chance to speak to Patrick about Blood Destiny? Not, not yet, no. Yeah. It looked like everything went wrong, really, and he got sort of, you know, around yeah. all the keen horses and saw a lot of daylight. Yeah, and um, so I better rush in here. The stewards want me for something, whatever okay. it is. Well, many congratulations. <laughs> Best you. of luck for the rest Cheers. of the day. Thank you. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.